from the data that I've seen in, in our client base, uh, it's a bit of an epidemic in dentistry. Missed calls are an epidemic. Uh, would you agree? I would agree. It's almost like, um, let's say somebody has been ignoring their oral health. They haven't gone to the dentist forever, right? And all of a sudden they find the perfect dentist. They like the dentist. They keep coming back for all their regular hygiene visits and they become a good patient. And all of a sudden that bad oral health starts changing. You know, the gum is not bleeding anymore. It's getting stronger. So the same thing happens because doctors don't have this data to start with. They are like that bad patient who never goes to the dentist. But now that they have data, yeah, no. they become, they don't know. Exactly. Now that they have data, they have education, they, they have knowledge, they totally change. It's almost like the good news is, the, I think exactly like what you disguise, described, Gary, you are really running an excellent practice, but because you didn't have the data, you didn't know A, there was a problem and therefore you didn't try to change it. That problem was off my radar screen exactly. to solve. Exactly. Because I believed with every ounce of my DNA that we were- It was forced. no problem. Everything is great. <laughs> no problem. I got no problem with that. Yes. <laughs> uh, you know, why do you, you don't try to fix a problem that you don't believe is there. Yeah, it's like uh, a patient never going to the dentist and thinking he has perfect oral health, you know? Yeah, uh, same, exactly. And yeah. anyway, let me talk about some things we did to fix that. It's, it's multifactorial. And of course, this will depend on your practice, but I want to present some solutions. Well, one of the things you could do is you could cross-train your team members. Um, uh, I'm a big fan of cross-training your dental assistants um, to be able to, to provide coverage up front when needed. And I'm also a big fan of cross-training business team members to provide help in the back. Like, for example, um, maybe when we're doing perio charting, yeah, you can do perio charting by yourself. I just can do perio charting by, by uh, himself or herself, Aaron. However, it's much easier to have uh, an extra set of hands uh, in there to do data entry while we're uh, doing perio charting. And any, any person can be trained to do that. Um, and so I think when we cross train our team members, a number of things happen. Um, we get improved functionality. We don't miss things because we have, so we're not going to miss getting our periodontal uh, pocket depth some leaning point data because we've got someone that can help out, you know, at that point. Um, and so anytime that happens, it creates a more cohesive office and it's more likely to give us all the information we need. But the other thing that I think it does is happens on a subconscious level, Naren, and that's that um, it creates a better team approach when we cross train, because everyone now has a better understanding of the other jobs in the, uh, the other jobs in the office. They don't just exist in a vacuum. Herb Kelleher, the, the founder of Southwest Airlines, was absolutely the pioneer and, and uh, the best example I could ever think about the value of cross training. Two days a year from the time Herb Kelleher founded Southwest Airlines um, un until now, it still goes on today, two days a year, everyone at Southwest switches jobs. Now, don't worry, it's still pilots flying the plane. <laughs> They're not going to let the bank channel. I, I was just worried for a minute. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. But meanwhile, they will have bank baggage handlers operating as gate agents, gate agents operating as baggage handlers, pilots operating as flight attendants. And they do that for a day. And you know what he called that program? It's a, it's a, a rather um, famous saying. But what Herb Keller called that was, it's our day to walk a mile in another person's shoes. So in other words, before you're critical of someone, walk a mile in their shoes <laughs> and understand what they have to deal with. And that exercise allowed Southwest Airlines to turn a flight. What they mean by turn a flight, Naren, is when the flight lands and connects to the, the gate, yes. how much time does it take them to deplane the passengers and, and then load the next load of passengers up on the plane and clean the so plane and fuel the plane do all that do all the checks yeah southwest historically does that in less than 29 minutes wow that's to deplane everyone clean the plane reprovision refuel and load the plane up with the next group of passengers and the industry standard is uh an hour to do that They've cut that in half. And Herb Keller knew that if the plane wasn't if the plane wasn't moving, it wasn't making any money. Money. That's the most. That's the biggest expense in an yeah. any for any airline company. That plane. Now there, there's a famous story, and I, I love this one. Uh, United Airlines hired a consultant 
uh, and so how can we board quicker? And they decided, Marin, that rather than boarding by row number, yeah. they would board by position in the row. So all the window seats got loaded first. Huh. Then all the middle seats got loaded second. And the aisle seats got no loaded third. Right. And so they set up a whole process around that. Uh, you know, consultant did this. Yeah. Set up a whole process and, and they worked on it and worked on it and worked on it. Then they applied it and, and they got great results. Would you like to hear what the result was, Aaron? Instead yeah. of taking 60 minutes to loan the load the plane, it took 59. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why you need a consultant. <laughs> All right, I can make fun of myself. Uh, but um, yeah, that's what happened when United Airlines did that. <laughs> but it's really the, the walk a mile in, in another person's shoes. And so when a front desk team member goes back and does paracharting, that team member understands more about that process. When a uh, an assistant answers the phone, they understand more. And I believe that any of your assistants can be trained as we've done this in, in all of our client offices for specific, they don't have to do everything up front. But I want them to be trained to do four things. Check a patient in, check a patient out, handle every financial arrangements and payment for everyday general dentistry. Not necessarily, you know, high value dentistry, but check, you know, handle financial arrangements for everyday general dentistry. And then number four, answer an incoming call from a potential new patient with a success rate of 70% or higher in converting that call to a new appointment. And we've done this uh, with all of our clients. It's been absolutely heartwarming to see uh, how well our assistants have done when cross-trained on that. So one of the solutions would be cross-train uh, your, your team members so that you have another useful uh, person that can answer the phone. Uh, now, uh, let me back up. One other thing you can do is make sure you have enough inbound lines, enough incoming line. Now, that's just a, a, a little tactical decision you make with your phone company. Because if, if you only have five lines and, and all those lines are, are ringing, then the sixth call that comes is automatically going to voicemail. So make sure you have enough inbound lines uh, for sure. So that's just a little tactical thing that you can do. Number two, cross-train uh, your assistants to be able to answer the phones and cross-train them to meet those four standards. Um, and again, check patient in, check a patient out, handle financial arrangements and payment for everyday general dentistry, number three. And number four, answer inbound phone calls from potential new patient uh, with a conversion rate of 70% or higher. Uh, those four things. Um, number three, uh, an, a third possible solution is consider outsourcing. Um, consider outsourcing that you could have a resource that your calls could roll to and, and be answered. There's, there's uh, lots of resources available for outsourcing. By the way, I had my first experience of this, Naren, um, over 40 years ago in Dr. Omar Reed's office. Over 40 years ago, Dr. Reed thought it'd be a great idea to hire someone to answer the phones because the phones were, were such a, a whir of activity. Um, and he hired the grandmother, a, a young grandmother, of one of the hygienists to answer the phones. And that was her job, to answer the phones, rang off campus, and she answered the phones. And it was I, I experienced this in 1982 with Dr. Reed. Now, the problem was... He was way ahead of his time. We didn't have the technology. She didn't have real-time access to the schedule. Mm. And constantly things were changed. So unfortunately, it was a failed experiment. But that's how far ahead Dr. Reed was at solving this. Uh, and unfortunately, the technology is now, you know, it was not available then, but it is absolutely available to be able to do that practically now for outsourcing. Someone outsourcing can have real-time access to your schedule, can know exactly what to schedule if that's an inbound call. 